Before we look ahead to where we're going, let's look back at where we've been. We began this Advent retreat with the Incarnation, the divine trinity in the glory of heaven, looking down upon the human race, which falls more and more into sin and death. God does not merely see, but acts. The eternal Son will become a man, born of the Virgin Mary. We joined Mary in prayer at the Annunciation as she was greeted by the angel Gabriel with a grand invitation to become truly the mother of God. We looked upon her heart as she heard this greeting and pondered this message and asked simply, how can this be? Her question is not one of doubt, but rather a prayer of trust and hope as if to say, tell me more, I want to believe, I want to understand and do God's will. She replies, yes, fiat, amen, may it be done to me according to your will. Then Mary rushes off to visit her relative Elizabeth in the visitation. Elizabeth is also pregnant as the angel had promised. Her son is John the Baptist. He will be the great prophet and forerunner of Jesus, and perhaps his playmate as a little boy. Mary must then tell her fiancé, Joseph, of this news of divine power at work in her. Initially, Joseph turns away. He's sad, confused, and brokenhearted by this news, and he plans to break off their engagement. Yet an angel visits him in a dream and says, do not be afraid. How often those words occur in the Gospels, do not be afraid. Joseph accepts Mary and this divine child into his heart. Today we look at the nativity, the birth of Jesus. As St. Ignatius Loyola describes this scene, let's again engage our five senses. Let's use our minds and hearts so that we may enter more fully into this scene. We want to see the scene and even place ourselves spiritually in this gospel passage. As we look at the nativity, let's smell the smells, see the sights, and hear the sounds. Especially, let's focus on the people, their faces, Mary, Joseph, and the child Jesus to watch them, to hear them, to look upon their hearts. St. Ignatius writes, Our Lady went forth from Nazareth, about nine months with child, seated on a donkey, accompanied by Joseph to go to Bethlehem to pay the tribute tax. Let's set the scene. We want to see the sights in our imagination of this road from Nazareth to Bethlehem. We consider the length and the breadth, whether the road is level or through valleys or over hills. Also, let's look at the place of nativity, how large, how small, how low or high, and how it is prepared. We see the persons, Our Lady Mary and Joseph, and after his birth, the child Jesus. I want to make myself a poor and unworthy servant looking at the Holy Family and serving their needs with all respect and reverence. And then to reflect on myself to draw some profit. To contemplate what they are saying. To beg favors according to what I perceive in my heart. That I might better follow and imitate our Lord who has become man for me. Mary is almost nine months pregnant. She's about to ride a donkey 90 miles south for a census. Moms, I got to imagine this is no one's dream of how to prepare for the birth of your firstborn. I've ridden a donkey a couple times when I was working in Central America. And just after a quarter mile, we were both glad when I got off. Imagine 90 miles while pregnant. Joseph walking along, perhaps feeling a little anxious. He loves his wife and wants to keep her safe. He's praying for this beautiful child. 
this boy that she carries. We see their faces, their expressions, the sweat on Joseph's brow. Let's look into Mary's eyes and behold her heart. We might again recall those words of St. Augustine. She conceived in her heart before she conceived in her womb. She's a woman of prayer and faith. She isn't superwoman. This is not a fun journey. She didn't ask for this and did not plan for it to go this way. She's young, faithful, recently married. She has hopes and dreams for this boy, like so many other moms through the centuries. And in Luke's gospel, we hear that Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. She's a woman of prayer, speaking to the Lord from her heart, even as she carries the Son of God under her heart. This is the beating, sacred heart of the Son of God. We want to place ourselves in this scene. This is not a spectator sport. God enters our world in the Incarnation. And the Lord invites me into this scene, not just to watch, but to participate. As Ignatius writes, I will make myself a poor servant, gazing at them, contemplating and serving them. We want to use our five senses and put these gifts at the service of our prayer and contemplation. Even as God enters our world, we want to enter this gospel passage. I want to notice my own heart, my hopes, my emotions. Where is my attention drawn? To which person and which face? As I look at my own heart, I share my hopes and concerns with the hearts of Joseph and Mary and Jesus. Joseph searches for a place to stay with increasing urgency. It's a time of Jewish feasts and there is no room at the inn. A barn. This is his best option. This is no husband's ideal plan for the birth of his child. We want to engage our senses. Have you ever been in a barn? Do you know what a barn smells like? The heat of the day has passed, and as evening descends, a cool, damp breeze of night now descends. And yet a barn is also a place of warmth. The straw, the heat of the animals brings warmth. The fire of the lamp sheds light in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It's time for the birth. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The eternal, all-powerful, triune God, who created the heavens and the earth, now has become a tiny child, held in the arms of this young woman. God's heartbeat next to the heartbeat of Mother Mary. His sacred heart, a strong, tiny heartbeat in this newborn child, Jesus. Mary holds her son close to her own heart, her immaculate heart by his sacred heart, her feminine heart by his eternal heart. What does she feel as she holds her son, speaks to him, sings to him, listens to him. St. Ignatius invites us to look into our own hearts and to ask favors accordingly, that I might better follow and imitate our Lord who has become man for me. I might recall the words of that favorite Christmas song. Silent night, holy night, as we look at and consider what they were doing, as going on journeys and laboring, that the Lord may be born in the greatest of poverty, and at the end of his labors for us, after hunger and thirst and heat and cold, that he might die on a cross. He did all this for me. 
personalizing the universal. Yes, this is the eternal God who became man to save the human race. Of course, Jesus loves all people throughout the centuries. And he loves me, that personal connection. He looks upon my heart with love, even as I behold his sacred heart. Make an offering. Even as Jesus offers himself to me in the incarnation, in this manger, in the Eucharist and on the cross, so too I'm invited to offer myself, my heart, my life to him in return. A colloquy. That's a word Ignatius uses that means a friendly conversation. In fact, he asks us to make a triple colloquy to conclude this contemplation on the nativity. First, I turn to Mary. I look into my own heart and speak to her heart as I would to a friend, a mentor. She's the mother of God and my spiritual mother. I can listen to her and then conclude with a Hail Mary. Then I ask her to join me in speaking with Jesus. I go with her to the child Jesus lying in the manger. This is the eternal Lord. Jesus, who is risen from the dead, now with a sacred heart beating with love for me. I speak to him heart to heart, listening to any special words he may have for me. I want to know him more, love him more, and follow him more day by day. I can conclude with a glory be or another familiar prayer. Finally, I go with Mary and Jesus to speak with God the Father. Again, speaking heart to heart. Now before all the angels and saints, offering myself in love and service, even as God has given himself to me in love, this Lord of Lord, this King of Kings, honored by the three kings, praised by shepherds, adored by angels, sung to by children and the poor. And I conclude with an Our Father. I want to thank you for joining us in this, our first ever online retreat. In her heart, an Advent journey with Mary. Please do take some time for prayer today. You can go to our website for resources related to this retreat, scripture passages, prayers, and reflection questions. You can use a journal or a notebook to help you. And you may wish to share some of these graces heart to heart with someone you love a spouse, friend, or roommate. If you want to support our work, we would be deeply grateful. Please pray for us at the Pope's Worldwide Prayer Network. And if you can, support us with gifts. We've got some options on our website. Whether one-time donation, monthly, through Venmo, and more. Help us continue, deepen, and strengthen our mission. In this beautiful 176-year-old Jesuit mission, rooted in our charism to help all people grow in a life of prayer. By devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Ignatian spirituality, and the monthly prayer intentions of the Holy Father. In these challenging times, we all need to rely on the grace of God and to deepen our own spirit of prayer. We try to reach out through retreats, videos, and written reflections in my office with a special focus on young adults and families and mailings to the elderly, the sick, and those in prison. Pray for us and know we're praying for you. Blessed Advent.